As many of you are aware, Nintendo is currently in the process of closing down a lot of the support for some of their older systems. Specifically, the Wii U and 3DS eShops are going away. And because of that, along with a couple other reasons, I just bought another 3DS XL. Let's talk about why. If you've been a longtime fan of the channel, you'll know that I have definitely unboxed my fair share of 3DSs, especially near the end of the system's life cycle when I started getting into that. And I've kept a few of those around, and there's some that have become my main go-tos. For a long time, it was the Pokemon 2DS XL. But recently, you know, looking over what's happening with the 3DS right now, I really wanted to lock down and have what could be kind of considered my final 3DS, uh, the one that I plan to use and have be the main one that keeps that library alive. And that's why I went out of my way to pick up this Hyrule Edition new 3DS XL for a few different reasons. Uh, one of the biggest which being that this is actually my very first 3DS that has dual IPS screens. If you don't know what I'm talking about, one of the weirder things that Nintendo did with 3DS production is there are actually two different kinds of display panels that can be inside your 3DS. There are TN panels, which is by far the more common one, or IPS panels. What's particularly annoying about this is that it's not something that's tied to any kind of model number or anything. It's not like you can be like, oh, yeah, this specific version of the 3DS came with IPS, while these versions came with TN. Doesn't work that way. There are a couple important differences between TN and IPS. Uh, the biggest one that is probably the most noticeable factor right away is the viewing angles. A TN panel is going to wash out very quickly if you're not looking at it straight on, whereas an IPS panel is going to maintain the image really well. Also though, when you have these display types side by side, you'll also be noticing that in general, IPS just looks a little bit better. The color accuracy, the contrast, just the way the image looks in general uh, is going to be a little better looking. It's not gonna be a night and day difference. It's not something where, you know, TN is absolute garbage by comparison, but if you do want the best looking experience possible on 3DSs, that does make an important difference. And what's really frustrating about this is the fact that there's not really an official way to know which of these display types you have without actually turning on the system and checking. It's not as if there's a specific model type that always said IPS. It's not like there's a specific run of designs that always said IPS. It basically is a random lotto. Uh, for instance, the one I have right here is again that Hyrule Edition one. And I've talked to multiple people who have this same exact model, but have a TN panel for one or both displays, whereas this one is IPS on both. That could be that some specific models might have a slightly higher chance, but the kind of general reaction I've been seeing is that really there's always a chance with the new 3DSs and new 3DS XLs that you can grab an IPS, whereas if you're getting, say, a 2DS, you're gonna get TN. If you have a 3DS and you're really curious which display type yours has, it's actually relatively pretty easy to check. Uh, basically, you just turn the 3DS on and just start tilting the screens, seeing whether or not the image washes out. If it's a TN panel, it's gonna white out very quickly. If there's any kind of strong colors, they're going to change in color as well. Whereas an IPS panel is going to maintain the general look of the image much better. This is especially obvious if you have two systems side by side to compare because you will see immediately how the TN image just completely washes out, whereas the IPS is something that you can still very clearly visibly see. Again, in my opinion, the difference between these is relatively close enough that if you don't care and you just want a way to play games, TN is gonna be fine most of the time. But if you do care about trying to have the best looking image quality possible and you want sort of the best version of a 3DS you can have, IPS is something you absolutely want to look out for. And again, the reason why I went out of my way to do this is that Nintendo is closing down the 3DS eShop. For all intents and purposes, we can really assume that any kind of major support for the system is gonna be going away very soon. And so really I wanted to make sure that I secured both A, a system whose design I really liked, which the Hyrule system is absolutely beautiful, and B, a system that to me would be one of the best ways of ensuring that I'm always able to play these games the best way that they look to me. And so this involves not only getting the system, but now really actively going out of my way to purchase any digital games before it's too late, as well as getting any DLC for games that would be hosted on the store. Now, you may have heard mentioned before that the eShop has already begun closing down in waves. The particular big thing that's already happened is that credit cards are no longer available to use on the system. And that might make you think, oh no, I've already missed my chance. It's too late. I can't really buy stuff on here. It's actually not the case. Uh, not being able to use credit card is certainly a little more frustrating. It requires you to jump through a couple extra hoops, but but you are absolutely able to still buy content on the 3DS eShop in two major ways. Uh, one, you can try to hunt down some Nintendo point cards and redeem those on the eShop. You can still find these codes fairly easily online, uh, but really the even easier way is that if you own a Nintendo Switch, just add funds 
to your system there. As long as the eShop accounts are linked, any funds that you add to your Switch is gonna show up as available on your 3DS as well. Another way you could go about this is by adding funds through Nintendo's website. Uh, really, one of the main reasons why I think credit cards got removed a lot sooner than the other options is that the 3DS is old and therefore, you know, some of the securities in place for using credit card purchases are probably just not as secure. We've already seen that same thing happen with the PS Vita where you can't use credit cards on that either, which is a little frustrating because while thankfully a lot of stuff for the 3DS is made available physically, there are a lot of games that are also digital only as well as some games that have exclusive content that requires you to buy it through a DLC store. To begin with, Ace Attorney. If you're a fan at all of the older Phoenix Wright games or you've checked out some of the more recent ones like the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, uh, these games have a number of releases on 3DS that are digital only. There was no physical edition released in the US, so if you want to be able to play them on your 3DS, you actually have to make sure you buy and download those right now. Those games are also available on some other platforms, including mobile phones, but if you want to keep it somewhere secure on like a more traditional gaming system, the 3DS is the place to do that. And I'll be honest, these aren't necessarily the best Ace Attorney games, but still, if you want to have access to that whole franchise, you got to make that move now. As I've said time and time again, I'm really big into RPGs. So when it comes to digital only stuff on the 3DS, one game I got to shout out right away is Crimson Shroud. This is one of the smaller titles available on the eShop that was developed by Level 5 and more importantly, had the lead designer of Yasumi Matsuno, who is one of my favorite writers in gaming. He's responsible for some stuff like Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy XII, Tactics Ogre, truly some awesome, great stuff. And Crimson Shroud is a smaller project that he worked on. Basically, the whole point of the game is to focus on having this kind of tabletop gaming experience experience where you're rolling dice, you're exploring dungeons. Uh, everything is handled like you're playing some kind of tabletop game with friends using miniatures. It's a really cool little game. There's not a lot of other stuff out there that messed with this kind of experience. Uh, and it's not that expensive either. But again, it's going to basically disappear from at least all, you know, official means after next March. Speaking of RPGs, uh, if you're a fan of the genre, that also happens to be the one on 3DS that really has a very high concentration of titles with DLC. Basically, every Fire Emblem game on the 3DS has some kind of stuff you can purchase. A lot of them are just kind of basic challenge maps, but there's also a number of ones that offer special plot lines you can do, side stories, things that kind of flesh out the overall world even more. So that's definitely something to keep your eye on, uh, as well as a lot of Atlas titles. Basically everything Shin Megami Tensei on the 3DS has some kind of DLC store. Some of these are very simple, small things like, oh, you can get a different announcer voice in certain games. Uh, but for a lot of them, there's things like special challenges. And again, in some cases, side story content that is worth picking up. One of the things that is a little frustrating, by the way, about DLC on the 3DS is there's not actually a unified system for how this works. Uh, depending on who made the game, you might be buying the DLC by just launching the title and looking at the home screen and seeing that there's an add-on shop option. And in other games like Fire Emblem, you actually have to play the game, progress to a certain point, and then find a specific NPC or location to talk to, and that opens up the DLC options. And these are really just the two big franchises uh, I pointed out. There's a lot of other smaller titles that have this issue as well. Uh, Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology has a couple things you can get via DLC. And a really big one that I'm currently debating how much I want to throw down on is Theater Rhythm Curtain Call. This was a rhythm game made by Square that celebrates a lot of awesome Final Fantasy stuff, and it has a lot of DLC. Not super expensive, but just a lot of microtransaction ones where it's like, buy this song for a dollar, buy this song for a dollar. There's quite a few songs to buy, uh, along with a few characters you can download as well. Going back to the idea of buying a 3DS to last you, there's a couple other little things I want to recommend. IPS is again, something to look out for if you really want the best looking image possible. Uh, the other thing is, of course, paying attention to what specific model of 3DS you end up buying or looking for. I'm not going to go in depth on every single one, but there's a couple key things I want to point out as far as the terminology for a lot of systems. Uh, there's the original run of 3DSs that are usually just called 3DS or 2DS. And then there's the newer line, which have the very not confusing at all naming scheme of putting new in front of them with the new 3DS, new 3DS XL, etc. The big important difference here is that the new systems are a little more powerful and there are some games that require that. Uh, for instance, the Xenoblade port on 3DS only works if you're using a new 3DS. There are also some games that don't technically require it, but might as well, like say Hyrule Warriors, where yeah, you can play it on regular 3DS, but the frame rate is not gonna look pretty. 
There are also some eShop exclusive retro titles that are locked behind this as well. Uh, SNES games specifically require a new system. You can still get Game Boy games and NES stuff on older 3DSs, but if you want to get digital SNES titles, that requires a new 3DS. Other thing to consider, 3DS versus 2DS. Obviously, the big thing here is that 2DS systems don't have the 3D slider, but an important clarification is, like I was talking about with IPS stuff, 2DSs, as far as I can tell, are TN only. I have not seen anyone ever talk about having a 2DS with an IPS panel, so that's something you're interested in tracking down, the 3DS is going to be one that has that option, 2DS isn't. Also, in general, if we're just talking about the quality of the system, while I like 2DSs and a lot of the designs that they have, ultimately the 3DS is just a better system, not just in terms of the 3D slider, but also things like the speakers. And lastly, one other kind of debate that I don't think enough people always consider is XL versus regular. I think a lot of people sometimes have the immediate knee-jerk reaction of wanting to get the XL, bigger system, bigger screens, uh, but a trade-off of this is that, remember, the gameplay that's being displayed is always going to be the same resolution. So ultimately, while XLs offer a larger, clearer image, especially if things like text size are important to you, the, the regular 3DS, while smaller, is gonna offer better pixel density, which results in a crisper, nicer looking image. Personally, I enjoy having a larger screen. I also find that, you know, while there are accessories you can buy to help alleviate this, the regular smaller 3DSs are just way more uncomfortable for me to use over a long period of time. So I'm happy with my choice of a 3DS XL. Uh, but if you don't care about screen size and you really just want a nice crisp looking image, it's worth considering the regular smaller 3DSs by comparison. Ultimately, if your main interest is just keeping the library alive in some form, all that matters is you grab a 3DS, maybe focus on a new one if you wanna make sure you have full library support entirely, but ultimately, as long as it's something that plays 3DS games, you're good to go. Again, credit cards cannot be used with 3DSs, but you can still make purchases. There is still time. The shop isn't fully closing down until March of 2023. So if any part of you is at all curious about not missing out on some of these games and trying to preserve them for your own personal use, definitely something worth considering. Uh, prices in general of 3DSs have already shot up quite a bit. Uh, brand new unboxed ones are prohibitively expensive, very easily, uh, but if you're just looking at used 3DSs in general, you can still find some fairly fair prices. Probably more than some of you are expecting because of the fact that, again, that demand is starting to go up as these systems have been discontinued and the shop is going to close down, but it's not completely awful just yet. Honestly, while well, the market itself right now is already getting kind of bad, it's just gonna get worse as time goes by. I mean, we've already seen this happen with a lot of other older systems. An eShop can help kind of keep that stuff regulated a little bit because there's always an official MSRP way that like, you know, ties the price down a little bit. Uh, but with that going away, you're gonna see a lot of physical copy stuff, I think, go up even more in price as time goes by. So while honestly, yeah, it's already a little late to try and pull this move right now, it's not too late yet. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. If you didn't, thumbs down as well. It's good for me to have. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later.